Hey, what's going on there guys? Nick here from Absolute MTG, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Rug Twin for the modern format. So Rug Twin, or otherwise known as Tarmo Twin, is a blue-red Splinter Twin combo deck that splashes green. And outside of the fact that Tarmogoyf is just really good and is pretty much splashable in most decks, uh, we go for the green because we can play Tarmogoyf in here and we can almost just beat opponents by playing a fair deck most times. So um, the reason for this is that Sometimes whenever you're playing the twin decks, uh, you won't really have your combo and your opponent's just kind of getting progressive with their board state and uh, your reactive plays aren't really that amazing. Um, and sometimes you just get the combo and your opponent's able to disrupt it and you're left with nothing and uh, you're not really getting anywhere as far as progressing your own board state goes. So uh, we solve the problem by playing Tarmogoyf and we just play that value creature and we can honestly just ride it into having some free wins most times. Um, most decks aren't going to have enough of ways to be able to deal with Tarmogoyf and your combo piece as well. So eventually you pretty much are going to pin them on one thread or another and you're just going to win because of it. Uh, so to actually dissect the cards that we're playing here, uh, we're playing three Pestermite and three Deceiver along with our three Splinter Twin. So this is going to be our combo piece for the deck to make infinite copies of either the Pestermite or Deceiver depending on which one we have on the battlefield. Um, it's also acceptable to do like a two and four split. Um, it's honestly personal preference and what your meta actually looks like and that will pretty much shape how you're actually playing your copies in this deck. So uh, doing two pests from right four deceiver is perfectly acceptable as well. Um, your splinter twin goes on to one or the other. Uh, you tap your creature, it makes a copy of it, and the copy is going to untap the creature that has splinter twin and you go for infinite with it. Uh, we have our four Tarmogoyfs in the deck, which are just our value beaters. Uh, we try to out-tempo players, and again, if they don't have enough ways to deal with everything that we're trying to do, we'll just beat them. We have three Snapcaster Mage, which will recur some of our value cards, like Lightning Bolt. Uh, can recur things like Serum Visions to allow us to draw and scry some more. Uh, Electrolyze to pick off smaller creatures that our opponents have, and to give us some leverage in the tempo matchups. Um, cards like Spell Snare to disrupt what our opponent's trying to do, even like some counter spells like Remand, Dispel, and Spell Pierce that we're playing. Uh, we have one Vendillion Click which can either disrupt what our opponent has in their hand or it can allow us to draw another card and essentially kind of just cycle. Um, so if we have a bunch of dead cards in our hand, we can uh, Vendillion Click ourselves, uh, show our opponent the card, uh, put it to the bottom of our library, and draw a new card and get us closer to something else. We have uh, four Serum Visions, which allows us to draw a card and scry two to set up some plays for us in the upcoming turns. Four Lightning Bolts, because it's just really good removal and we can tempo people. Uh, the two Electrolyze to pick off smaller creatures. Um, for the matchups where Electrolyze isn't relevant uh, and it doesn't really have any targets, we end up just siding it for more relevant cards out of our sideboard. Uh, we have a Spell Pierce and a Dispel, so I had two slots that I ended up just um, splitting between a uh, one and one between the Spell Pierce and the Dispel. Both of them are very relevant in the format right now, and both of them are really good. And uh, ultimately, we can make the decision for uh, which one stays and which one's more appropriate, and if we want to side into uh, more of them uh, based on what matchup we're playing post-board. We have two Cryptic Commands, which is our uh, more higher-end uh, counter spell that we have in the deck. Uh, obviously, it's the most expensive counter spell that we're playing, but it's a hard counter. So, uh, once we get into like the mid to late game, it allows us to disrupt what our opponent's doing and also get us a little bit closer to the cards that we want to see. Or it can just allow us to clear up a board state that our opponent's trying to develop, and then we can just try to either combo or tempo them out. Uh, the two spell snares because there are a lot of uh, two converted mana cost cards within the format that are very valuable to most players. Three remands to uh, just counter spells and return them to their opponent's hand and we get to draw a card which uh, gets us a little bit closer to things that we need to see. And then two dig through time which is like a mid to late game card that allow us to uh, just kind of find the pieces that we need to actually be able to combo and win the game. So. 
whether it's like us having the actual combo itself and we're looking for like a way to disrupt uh, any counter magic or something like that or just finding a splinter twin or uh, one of our creatures to play the splinter twin onto uh, dig through time ends up being a really really good resource in this type of deck all right so now for the sideboard so what i have in my sideboard is a single volcanic fallout two electricery is it static caster three blood moon dispel two spell skite two combust anger of the gods karanos god of storms and batter skull so uh, let's talk about where each card comes into play. So the Volcanic Fallout is good for uh, X, two or less toughness creatures. So uh, three mana, instant speed, pyroclasm to get rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, useful because Delver is just on the rise right now and you can get rid of a lot of um, their value stuff. Uh, it can get rid of Swift Spears, uh, Flipped Delvers, Young Pyromancer and its tokens. Um, and you pretty much just have to assume your opponent doesn't have like mutagenic growth or a prowess trigger on swift spear to keep it alive or something like that. But either way, the volcanic fallout is just absolutely clutch against the Delver decks. Uh, but otherwise, any matchups that are playing like a lot of X2 or less creatures, the volcanic fallout just ends up being really, really good. Um, we have the electricery for a similar purpose as well, but for uh, X1 creatures. So. Uh, the matchups like Delver because it gets rid of Young Pyromancer and its tokens, also any unflipped Delvers as well, um, and also Affinity. It's pretty good against Affinity and getting rid of uh, Ink Moth, Blink Moths that could be active, and uh, then on top of that, like Mem Knights and stuff like that that our opponent could have. So uh, it's not perfect against Affinity, but it's definitely still good against Affinity. Uh, a better card against them is actually Is It Staticaster. It does uh, a little bit more for us. Uh, as far as just kind of pinpointing some stuff and being able to just use it over the course of multiple turns and uh, interacting with what our opponent's doing. Uh, is it Staticaster is also good for the Delver matchup and it's great for the Muliripod matchup as well. We have three Blood Moon for the Tron and the Scapeshift matchups. It seems like it's a redundant card because we're playing three colors. However, if you guys will notice the way that the land base is set up, it's pretty easy to fetch up like a, uh, a forest to have your mana for Tarmogoyf and otherwise we're playing a lot of basics so it's not really a problem to find um, more islands or even just like more lands that are going to enter in as mountains for us to be able to actually progressively win a game and to be able to do anything. Uh, I think it's more important to just shut out Tron from being able to do anything and uh, to keep Scapeshift from doing anything really really impactful in their early game while we're trying to set up our own combo on its own. And uh, we have Dispel, so Dispel doesn't really have any matchups that you need to side it in for, but it's good in a lot of matchups, so we have another one in the sideboard that we can easily just kinda swap in over some cards that could be dead or less relevant for us, and the Dispel ends up being more relevant. We have two Spell Skites, so the Spell Skites kind of a, a disrupt for other combos and other uh, deck strategies as it is a protection for our own. So uh, against decks like Infect and Boggles, we can redirect their activations and their card casting to our Spell Skite. And uh, against matchups um, that are setting in hate for our actual Splinter Twin combo, uh, the Spell Skite's just good at protecting it. And even against like the Burn matchup, if our opponent's just trying to play Lightning Bolt over and over on us, um, we can just redirect, uh, if it's appropriate, we can redirect the uh, spells that our opponent's casting onto the spell skite, and instead of taking like six, um, we can pay four, uh, have two activations on the spell skite, and just trade a spell skite to not take as much damage. Uh, or over the co course of like multiple turns, we can soak up some damage and not take as much. And the spell skite's also pretty good at blocking young pyromancer as well. Um, so we have the two combust, which are great for the blue white red matchup and uh, like the mirror matches any of the splinter twin decks that we could potentially face up against uh, it's really great just that it can't be countered by spells or abilities a anger of the gods which is just kind of like a bigger volcanic fallout for us but um, the biggest thing is that it exiles so it's very relevant for like the maliripod matchup and then the karanos and the batter skull uh, this deck you can actually side out the combo piece and you basically play like a control deck or like more so a tempo deck than anything else and your game plan is to disrupt whatever your opponent's doing whether it's like siding in more creature hate or combusts or spouse guides to lock them out and stuff like that 
And then uh, you eventually just end up winning with like Tarmogoyf, Skaranos, Batter Skull, and just extremely valuable uh, resources that your deck actually has. And you pretty much kind of like blank your opponent if they're siding in like an enchantment hate against you and they're trying to pinpoint uh, their hate towards your actual Splinter Twin combo. Uh, it's very easy to just side out the combo entirely and you just basically play like a more mid-range type control deck. Uh, but yeah, that is our deck tech here for Rug Twin for the modern format, or Tarmo Twin if you will. Uh, the entire deck list is in the description below where you guys can check it out and use it as a reference. There's also a deck list via deckstats.net that you guys can check out for pricing and whatnot. Now, I realize this deck isn't affordable. I mean, the Tarmogoyfs are extremely expensive. Uh, however, this is more so geared for the very competitive players out there and people that are trying to uh, get some ideas for higher tier competitive decks and some fun stuff to play. And even if you just play like on Cockatrice, it's definitely a fun deck to, uh, to go through, learn how to play, and to just smash people with. So if you guys enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you thumbs up the video and subscribe for more Magic the Gathering content. But until next time, guys, peace out. If you guys want to keep up to date with everything that we have going on here at Absolute MTG, remember to hit that subscribe button, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. Also, remember to check out our sponsors of the channel, MTG Madness and AVUGames.com. But as always, thank you guys for watching.